Well, the next thing we wanted to get to today is sulfur. We wanted to discuss sulfur because everybody, Darren, talks about NPK, 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 and we find that most farmers are doing a fairly decent job, especially with nitrogen. But when it comes to sulfur, it's not a micronutrient. It's a secondary nutrient. Plants need a lot of sulfur, especially crops like corn here. I mean, in this residue, in these stalks, there's all kinds of sulfur. If you're gonna have a great crop, especially a grass crop like corn or wheat, you've got to have sulfur. Well, there's also a good amount of sulfur in the organic matter in your soil. So it's important to consider this residue and the importance of it as you move into future crops. Now, when we talk about sulfur, one of the other things I find, Brian, is a lot of guys will do trials on their farm. You know, on one piece of ground, I'm gonna put a little more nitrogen or I'm gonna put a little more phosphorus or a little more potassium. And yeah, you know, sometimes they see a gain if they weren't quite managing that program as well as they should have been. But the one that I see the biggest gains from from a lot of guys has been sulfur. They say, wow, I put some more sulfur on and man, did that make a difference. Okay, you've probably heard us say this on Ag PhD before, but the main reason why we're having big issues as far as sulfur goes, in our opinion at least, is that as farmers, we didn't used to have to fertilize with sulfur because our yields were a lot less and we were getting free sulfur from air pollution. Well, unfortunately, our air is pretty clean now, Darren. Unfortunately, so. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good deal that we've got clean air. And you yeah, know, I prefer the, to live a few years longer yeah, and but spend the, a little the more The point on is, it costs us money now. Well, so we have to spend money on sulfur. But fortunately, there are a number of ways you can get sulfur on our farm. Let's talk about some of the ways we get it in our own operation. Manure is probably number one. Where we can put manure on, that's great. We get some sulfur sulfur and fairly high doses of sulfur depending on what type of manure you're getting we use dairy manure on our own farm but that's one of my favorite things well that's one of the big things with fertility and, and a lot of it comes down to where you're at and what are the sources that are close by to you now there are also some close sources for us of ammonium sulfate and ammonium sulfate's a great way to get a good form of nitrogen out there ammonium but also to get that sulfate out on our ground so we're getting kind of two things that we know we need all in one shot and in a great form for plant availability on some of our ground, we worry about flooding every spring, and so we never put nitrogen on in the fall, we put it on in the spring. We like to do it then with liquid nitrogen most of the time, and if you're going to put liquid nitrogen out, we always encourage you to put some form of sulfur along with it. That will help stabilize that nitrogen a little bit. So on some of our ground, we're using the liquid product. I like a liquid product called Access. Uh, there are other liquid products out there that you could use as well. You could use something like ammonium thiosulfate also. Uh, so you have to look at, at all your choices on the liquid side and, and find out what's going to work best for you. But you can certainly do it. It's an easy way to mix it right in with liquid nitrogen. Now, one other form that you may not have given a lot of thought to is when you're putting lime out there, depending on what kind of lime you're getting. So on our farm, for example, we get lime out of wastewater treatment facilities. And quite often, there is some sulfur in there. Now, I'm not saying there are dramatic amounts or anything, but on our farm, we're putting on six tons per acre of lime in some some cases, well, we're getting more than enough sulfur for the next year in that particular application. So you got to look at all these different forms. And, and just like I said, you know, even just in our operation, we have four, sometimes even five different forms, different ways to get that sulfur out there. So you have a lot of opportunities on your farm to get this important nutrient into your ground. Like you say, lime is calcium carbonate. So you don't normally think of that as being a sulfur source. What many people do when they're looking at calcium is calcium sulfate, which is known as gypsum. Now gypsum is a good source of sulfur for your ground. And it just depends on what you have in your area, whether you've got a local source of gypsum, because trucking can get to be an issue if you've got to put on a ton or more onto certain types of ground to try and manage some of the soil factors you have. One of the big reasons why we're talking about sulfur today is it's something you need to fertilize with every single year in pretty much every crop you've got, because every crop is going to use some sulfur. You can just go to the Ag PhD website. We've got information there under the resources tab. We also have an app that you can download to your iPhone. It's called the Fertilizer Removal app from Ag PhD to look at how much sulfur you actually need. But the thing you got to keep in mind with sulfur is it leaches just like nitrogen. So you wouldn't even consider planting corn or wheat without putting nitrogen on every single year. It's the same thing with sulfur. Sulfur is going to leach just as easily as nitrogen will. Well, and that's a good way to think about it, Brian. When you look at sulfur applications, for the most part, guys are going to try and do those in the spring because we've got a leaching potential. So if you could do it in the spring, that would be ideal. The other thing is I really like putting it with nitrogen for a couple of reasons. The main one being when you have good available sulfur for your plants, they are more efficient using their nitrogen. 
And that's really the biggest one for me. When I look at our plants and you say, well, man, I'm spending so much money on the nitrogen that my corn crop or my wheat crop needs. If I could put some sulfur with it and also maximize the sulfur, you can get by perhaps with a little bit less nitrogen, or if you leave your nitrogen rate the same, perhaps you can be more efficient and also raise more yield. One other thing I wanted to mention about sulfur, Darren, is that if I see a soil test that has really high levels of sulfur, that tells me generally that we have a poor drainage issue because again sulfur will leach away under good drainage conditions so if you're sitting there with 100 200 parts per million of sulfur again most of the time i just figure oh boy we've got an issue with drainage we better solve that problem out there get some tile done do whatever you have to to fix that drainage issue because sulfur can become toxic just like most nutrients can become toxic if the levels get too great so that's not a good thing oh and one other thing when you talk about uh, a place where sulfur could actually be a negative uh, in the furrow is also one of those places. I like to put a lot of my nutrients right in the furrow with, with some of the safer sources of liquid fertility that we're using, but sulfur is not one of those things. You may be able to get by with a hint of sulfur, but you can't put very much safely in but the But you furrow. don't have to ban sulfur either. You know, it's not like P and K where you really want it exactly where it needs to be. Sulfur is going to move around a little bit in the soil. It can leach and stuff, so it's not as important to ban sulfur anyway. Hey, the other thing I was thinking about too, Brian, is when we talk about putting nitrogen out with sulfur, on our farm in our reduced tillage situations, we a lot of times like to put our liquid nitrogen out as the carrier for our pre-emerge herbicides, and we're spraying those out across the field. Mixing some sulfur in there really helps with that burn down as well, so that's another real positive of mixing that sulfur with the nitrogen. Well, once again, sulfur is an extremely important nutrient for your farm. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on this thing. Uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately, we don't have air pollution too much anymore, Darren, so we're not, we're, you're not getting your sulfur for free like you used to, so you may need to be fertilizing with this every single year. Well, one other thing you'll have to watch out for every year is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 